No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>Like any establishment institution in Singapore, uh, IPS, I think, can't be expected to be the master of its own destiny. It's a reflection of its times, of its environment. Back in the 1990s, I think when the government was keen on pruning the bunion tree, so to speak, uh, IPS was able to serve like an honours broker between government, civil society, the intelligentsia. Uh, in the 2010s though, perhaps because the government feels there's already an excess of criticism, IPS has, uh, I think accordingly, uh, in a stayed away from uh, controversy or research and activities that could be seen to add fuel to the fire. So in that sense, I suppose IPS is, uh, can be regarded as a barometer of the government's comfort level with alternative views. And at present, unfortunately, those comfort levels aren't particularly high. As the founding head of the Tomasek Foundation uh, Asia Journalism Fellowship, I was really delighted that IPS uh, agreed to adopt it. The marvellous programme that I think has made uh, many friends for Singapore, as well as providing life-changing opportunities for journalists in the region. I think Singapore's intellectual capital has blossomed over the years. There's so many smart young Singaporeans and I think the challenge for IPS is to keep up with that evolution. I think this would mean going beyond uh, activities that uh, the government considers helpful uh, or um, constructive. Uh, in the eyes of this the boomer-led establishment and instead uh, be much more nurturing of ideas uh, including controversial so-called sensitive ideas bubbling up from the ground. <laughs>